watching WHB TV 21. Now, live from Broadcast Center, this is Eyewitness News 21 at 6. There's no self-defense here. This was not an apprehension. This was a, uh, this was a severe beating. That beating has left one man dead, another in jail, and Carlisle police investigating the borough's second homicide in less than three weeks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kirsten Page. And I'm John White. Carlisle police are calling this one of the most severe beating cases they've seen in recent memory. Eyewitness News reporter Kara Jambrone has been following this story. She joins us now live in our newsroom with more. Kara. Well, John, 72-year-old Paul Shore was beaten early Saturday morning. He had severe head and brain injuries, a fractured skull, and more. He died yesterday afternoon at Hershey Medical Center, and police say it was all because he looked into the window of his attacker's girlfriend's home. I heard the girl across the street screaming. It was shortly after 1 Saturday morning, and Maxine Patterson looked out her window to see what was going on. She said, the man's looking in my window again. And by she didn't think I much of it, there, but was shocked when police officers came to her door. They say her neighbor's boyfriend, 31-year-old Wayne Franklin Rideout, apparently chased that man into this alley a half block away and attacked him. Tonight, he's in jail, and the man, 72-year-old Paul Shore, is dead. When he caught him, he beat him. He, uh, he hit him with his fist, kicked him, uh, um, and uh, caused severe injuries. In fact, the police affidavit states Rideout, quote, picked him up by the collar and slammed his head into the pavement. There's no self-defense here. This was not an apprehension. This was a, uh, this was a severe beating. Paul was a very quiet and nice man. He'd do for you anything you'd need to be done. Shore's family members still can't believe this happened. They say Paul Shore kept to himself. He liked motorcycles and playing in a bluegrass band. They're convinced there's more to his death. He uh, rode his motorcycle a lot. My sister went with him everywhere he went on it, and, uh, but he was a very gentle man. At the most, he may have looked in a window, and uh, that doesn't warrant this kind of response in any way. Now, an autopsy was performed on Paul Shore this afternoon. When those results are in, the Carlisle Police will meet with the District Attorney's Office to determine the degree of homicide facing Wayne Franklin Rideout. Reporting live from the newsroom, I'm Kara Jambrone. John, back to you. Thank you, Kara, for that report. Well, turning to politics, there's still one primary election race undecided. The Dauphin County Election Board will not certify the Democratic race for Harrisburg City Council. Eyewitness News was the first to tell you about the discrepancies in the primary election. And as Donna Kirker Morgan tells us, this may result in a court challenge, possibly even a new election. The Dauphin County Election Board quickly put their okay on all the elections except for one. They ask that you certify Ms. Stringer and let uh, Mr. Gallagher do the challenge according to the law. By four votes, Harrisburg City Council incumbent Pat Gallagher was beat out in the Democratic primary by Pat Stringer. A check of the votes, however, found problems. Without receiving any uh, evidence other than the report uh, from Mr. Chiavetta, it appears that there is a discrepancy between uh, the voters uh, registered and the partisan votes uh, returned. When this board returns, they could either decide to investigate or certify that city council race. Either way, Pat Gallagher's attorney expects they will continue on in the court system. If they uh, show Mr. Gallagher as losing, I don't think we have a choice but to challenge. Gallagher's attorney even suggests another election of some kind could be possible. Some aspect of a, a new election, I believe, will occur, but the parameters are yet to be decided. Election Board Chair Judge Scott Evans doesn't see that as possible, although he thinks there is legal precedent for the board to throw out votes, even entire precincts. Pat Stringer's attorney doesn't think any of that would be fair. She's won the election, and whatever happened did not happen as a result of Ms. Stringer, and therefore she should not suffer for um, some sloppiness that may have gone on in the boards. The election board makes its next move June 11th. In Harrisburg, Donna Kirker Morgan, Eyewitness News. The Elections Bureau chief found 50 votes of concern, but Gallagher's attorney says her investigation is coming up with other numbers. Meanwhile, the DA continues to investigate whether any criminal activity occurred in all this. And that leads us to tonight's Eyewitness News question. How should Dauphin County settle the Democratic race for Harrisburg City Council? Let us know what you think. Call the Eyewitness News line toll-free at 1-877-I-NEWS. 
Your call may be played in a later newscast. A tire fire is now burning in Lancaster County. It's at a tire recycling plant in Mountjoy Township near Elizabethtown. This is a live picture from the scene. You can see thick smoke from the fire. Hundreds of tires caught fire around 4.30 this afternoon. Crews from five different companies are trying to put it out, and they have to run lines along a fairly long trail, we're told. We'll have the latest on this fire at this uh, tire plant near Elizabethtown tonight on Eyewitness News 21 at 11. A fire in Lancaster County has destroyed a business that happened in Earl Township shortly after 10 this morning. The smoky fire started after an explosion in a paint mixing machine. One employee at the Adam Zimmerman Cabinets Company suffered minor injuries. When firefighters arrived, that fire was already out of control. There was nothing that we could do. It was strictly uh, protect the exposures, and uh, now it's going to be quite extensive overhaul operations. That custom cabinetry shop in Lancaster County is being considered a total loss. A restaurant in Cumberland County is still closed after a car crashed into the building. Large pieces of wood now cover the hole created by the car at the Friendlies in Camp Hill. This morning, crews were cleaning up the debris and making repairs. During the dinner rush last evening, a car crashed into the takeout area of the Friendlies restaurant. The driver was 18-year-old Eric Ramp. He's being charged with reckless driving. There were no serious injuries. Friendlies in Camp Hill is expected to reopen tomorrow morning. A woman armed with a rifle held up a fast food restaurant this morning in Dolphin Borough. Police say the woman robbed this Hardee's just after 5.30 this morning. State police made an arrest just a short time later. No one was hurt in that robbery in Dolphin County. And police in Dolphin County are searching for this man. He's a suspect in three hotel robberies this week. Sunday, a man walked into the Best Western on Progress Avenue. He gave the hotel clerk a note demanding cash. He was able to get away with the money. There were two more robberies yesterday. The first happened at the Comfort Inn on Union Deposit Road, then the Quality Inn in East Pensboro Township was hit. Now, the robber is described as a white man between 5'6 and 5'7. He's around 160 to 170 pounds. In all three robberies, the man was wearing a plaid short sleeve shirt and tan shorts. He was seen leaving in a blue Ford Tempo or Escort. Children in Steelton will soon have a new place to spend their free time. The old Mellon Bank building will be converted into a boys and girls club. The Mellon Bank donated the building to the borough. The new boys and girls clubs will include an area, or rather an arts and crafts area, library, and computer lab. This is something that uh, is, is a great opportunity for all of our young kids here in Steelton and for all of those who may be considering moving into the borough, maybe providing that extra incentive for them to come here. Finally, there's going to be something for our kids to do. The new Boys and Girls Club in Seelton is expected to be open by early August. Strong thunderstorms have been moving through the area today, causing some damage. A large branch fell from a tree at the governor's residence, hitting a car there. Two lanes of 2nd Street had to be shut down while crews cleaned up the mess. A strong wind gusts threw trash cans around, sending garbage into the road. The storms have also caused some isolated power outages throughout the viewing area. Yeah, it really was coming down yes. there. Yeah. certainly was. And uh, that was our first round. We're having another round. Looks like the General Harrisburg area not going to get hit. However, there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Central Franklin and Adams County mm. until 7 o'clock. So, so we need to keep on. an eye on it. Yes, yeah. it's like the old one-two punch, but after yeah. that, it should be all right. Let's check your forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy showers and thunderstorms, but the bad stuff should be over in about a half an hour or so. So hang on. I'll have the full forecast in just a moment. Okay, we'll all see right. you then. Thank you, Thank Ron. Thank you, Al. One of the nation's largest airlines is back in central Pennsylvania. Ahead on Eyewitness News 21 at 6, find out where TWA is taking travelers now. Plus, an American Airlines jet crashes during a landing. As many as six people may have been killed. You'll get the latest on the investigation. But first, a look at today's final numbers on Wall Street. I just want to celebrate yeah. America, it's time to celebrate. Now during the Great American Ford Celebration, great deals on America's favorites, like Ford Ranger, just $179 a month. That's right, just $179 a month. Ranger, America's number one choice in a compact pickup, only $179 a month. Now that's something to celebrate. It's the Great American Ford Celebration going on now, only at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. I just want to celebrate, celebrate. Ready for a great trimmer? Here it is, the Steel FS36. Easy starting, lightweight, and powerful. This steel is top rated and sale priced. Now just $119.95. Plus, get Y2K ready now with the new Steel 018C. Our exclusive quick chain adjuster is standard, and so are all these features that have made steel chainsaws legendary. At just $199.95. For trimmers, chainsaws, outdoor power equipment, it's your local steel dealer. See Scott's Lawn and Garden Equipment in Mount Holly Springs or Shirk's Power and Equipment in Hanover. You may notice that
noticed that my lips aren't moving. Not having me actually on stage saves a lot of money, which is being passed along in the form of a dandy Dodge Durango lease rate. Just $3.65 a month for a handsomely equipped 4x4 Durango with the best cargo room, passenger room, and power in its class. Dodge Durango. Unlike me, it really moves. You are watching Eyewitness News 21 with John White and Kirsten Page. A new state report has found bathrooms at service plazas on the Pennsylvania Turnpike are consistently dirty. The Legislative Budget and Finance Committee released a report today. The Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission says it's trying to make improvements and is conducting a two-year study. They're trying to find ways to improve the 22 plazas on the Turnpike. It can involve larger service plazas offering uh, uh, different types of services, uh, uh, larger parking lots. Uh, so it really, you know, obviously we're going to do a significant amount of customer and market research. Most of the plazas on the Pennsylvania Turnpike were built nearly 60 years ago. Air travelers in Harrisburg now have another choice. Passengers boarded TWA Flight 627 at HIA around 8 this morning. It's the first flight TWA has offered in Harrisburg in nearly nine years. The new flight leaves HIA each morning for Dulles Airport outside Washington. The flight then continues on to St. Louis. I think it's wonderful because I have relatives out in St. Louis and I will use this, use this flight pretty regularly. So I'm, I'm very glad about it. We, we fly over it all the time. I'm just glad to be back here because uh, I used to enjoy coming in here. It's a good market and we're happy to be back in here. TWA was one of the first airlines to offer service at Harrisburg International Airport. An investigation is underway into a deadly airplane crash in Arkansas. An American Airlines jet crash landed late last night in Little Rock, killing nine people. CBS News correspondent Lee Cowan has the latest. With storm clouds still hanging eerily overhead, the wreckage of American Flight 1420 lay near the end of the runway. Its fuselage charred and in pieces, the cockpit sinking into the muddy banks of the Arkansas River. Passengers say the Super MD-80 with 145 people on board came in fast and steep. Winds were gusting up to 90 miles an hour. Lightning lit up the night sky and sheets of rain and hail were obscuring the runway. Although the cause of the crash is far from being known at this point, few here say they would be surprised if weather didn't play a major factor. There's lots of data that we've got to correlate uh, with radar summaries and so forth. The flight en route from Dallas to Little Rock had already been delayed two hours because of the storm. Investigators say the weather service had warned the tower and those concerns had been relayed to the pilots. But exactly what was said will have to be determined from the cockpit voice and data recorders, both already on their way to Washington. <laughs> At a nearby theater, families met with survivors. There were a few words and a lot of hugs. Thank the Lord. Most told how they felt the plane spin almost completely around, slipping and sliding uncontrollably until it slammed into a steel light post that ripped the plane in two. It was then the ball of fire came, but others could feel the rain on their face instead. I just have a feeling we should have been dead. I thought, Lord, I'm coming home, and then after we hit the first time and I wasn't dead instantly, I thought, well, maybe he's going to spare lives. But the question of just how many lives will be spared remains in the balance. More than half the people on board that plane were taken to area hospitals, and many remain in critical condition tonight. Lee Cowan, CBS News, Little Rock. Well, many gamblers hope to hit the jackpot up later on Eyewitness News 21 at 6. Find out how one man took his chances and became a multi-millionaire. Plus, as we look live outside, the rain has stopped for now. Al Ganoza is back next to let us know if more powerful storms are on the way. This portion of Eyewitness News is sponsored by Hoffman Ford. You already know about our award-winning sales. And service. Now we're introducing our paint and collision center. We have the latest in frame equipment, plus two downdraft paint boosts to give you a factory bake finish. Our estimates are free. We work on all makes and models. And we're a Blue Ribbon approved shop. Stop in and talk to Tim or Steve when you need collision repair. You don't get special kind of service, just call me Ryan. Huffman Ford Harrisburg. 
Gretna Theater Summer 1999 subscriptions are on sale now. Ephraim Zimblis Jr. and Ellen Ordonio star in Love Letters. Harry Chapin's Cotton Patch Gospel is next. William Wyndham portrays Thomas Alva Edison in Camping with Henry and Tom. Swing Time Canteen stars Marcy McGuigan. The Duke Ellington Orchestra is now led by Paul Mercer Ellington and direct from one year on London's West End, This Lonely Heart, the Roy Orbison Experience. Remember, it's Children's Theater every Saturday. Call 964-3627 for subscriptions and information. Are you receiving workers' compensation payments? You may be entitled to a lump sum settlement. Call Handler, Henning, and Rosenberg for a free appointment. Now, during the Cadillac Win-Win Celebration, find outstanding savings on America's favorite luxury cars. Get great lease values like zero down and only $4.99 a month on Stylish DeVille, $5.49 a month on the technology leader, the Seville SLS, and just $3.99 a month on Sporty Katerra. Stop by and enter to win a weekend getaway at the Greenbrier, America's resort. Great cars, great values, and your chance to win a luxury vacation. See your Cadillac dealer for details. You're watching Eyewitness News 21 Weather with Al Ganoza. Well, there are good things and there are bad things about summer. The good things, the warm weather, the swimming weather, the sunshine, the bad things, the bugs, and the severe weather. We got a little bout of that earlier today. We had some thunderstorms moving through, and we have some moving through right now. Most of the area is going to miss that. It has thinned out as it's come east. I'll show you that in just a moment. Meantime, let's take a look at some numbers. Kind of an interesting tale today. We hit 90 for a high around 2 o'clock between 2 and 3, low of 68. Normal this time of the year, 78 for your high record. Boy, 1895 had some warm weather. We had a record high from 1895 yesterday. Now, currently, look at these temperatures. We are at 77 degrees. It was 73 about an hour ago, so the temperatures dropped about 15 degrees after that front moved through and those first thunderstorms took their toll. Coming back up a little bit. Dew point still sticky at 66. Humidity at 79%. Your wind out of the south. Your barometer is falling from 29.92. Let's go to the maps to see what we have as far as your precipitation. Well, here it comes. We put it in motion. This is about an hour or so behind. So the stuff you see coming through, that's the first wave that went through. The second wave is a little closer. And the thunderstorms and severe weather are thinning out as they get closer to us. Right now, we have a severe thunderstorm watch for Central Franklin and for Adams counties. That is in effect until 7 o'clock. The rest of us might just get some heavy rain, but it should not be violent. And as you can see, maybe some little stuff trailing after that, but that will be the culprit that will come through and give us some excitement. Hopefully not too much excitement in your area. Let's check the fronts to see why this is all happening. Well, I showed you last night this very slow-moving cold front that is coming in this way. It is bringing the rain and the showers and the thunderstorm through, and this high pressure behind our logo down there is moving on out. So much so that for tomorrow, the high pressure system has weakened a bit. So I've colored it pink to show that it's not quite as strong. And they're the front moving through Pennsylvania. By tomorrow morning, we should be in the clear. The humidity is going to leave. The temperatures are going to drop a little bit, but not too much. We're still going to have some warm temperatures well above the normal. Clouds moving like this, you can actually see the, the, the punches go through. There's the first kick we got, second one coming through. And after that, that's your front. It's going to move through, and we should be all right. We should have a good weekend also. Let's take a look at your forecast. Looks like this. Tonight, mostly cloudy chance of showers and thunderstorms. Some wind out of the southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and a low going down to 70. We don't have far to drop. Then tomorrow, we'll start out cloudy with an early shower possible. Then it will clear up, partly sunny. It will be windy. Winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour, and your high will be 84 degrees. And your five-day forecast looks like this. Tomorrow may be a morning shower, as we said, but then Friday, partly cloudy, less humid. And that's important. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, partly cloudy, and you see the highs there. So in summer, you got to take the good with the bad, and I think mm -hmm. we've uh, said bon voyage to springtime because mm -hmm. these temperatures are certainly smelling of summer. Okay, Definitely. and we need the rain, so that's the good news. Yes, that's uh, right. A long soaker would be better than these storms, but hey, we'll take it. The weatherman has to say we always need the rain. That's there right, and real quickly, <laughs> on a weather note, the weather is wreaking havoc on some high school graduations. The commencement at Camp Hill High School will be at 8 o'clock tonight in the auditorium. Now, it was scheduled for 7 o'clock outside, mm. but because of all the storms out there, they've had to move it inside. So anybody out there who's going to the Camp Hill graduation tonight, 8 o'clock in the auditorium. Better okay. be safe than sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Al. Well, two students from Central Pennsylvania have made it on to day two of the National Spelling Bee. The 72nd Annual Scripps Howard National Spelling Bee began this morning in Washington. 
More than 250 students from around the world are competing. 12-year-old Michael Hartwell of Middletown successfully spelled words including centripetal, and 12-year-old Bryce Cooney of Lancaster made it through with Meistersinger. The final rounds of the National Spelling Bee take place tomorrow in Washington. Mm, John, easy well words. Done. Easy. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, they got, they got <laughs> yeah, off easy sure. today. <laughs> Sports is up next tonight. We're just news 21 and 6. Major League Baseball held its annual draft this afternoon. Rick Liner will tell us about the number one selection. Also, post positions were drawn today for the Belmont Stakes, the final leg, and horse racing's triple crown. See who's the early favorite, so keep it here. Sports is next. For an unprecedented four years in a row, Dodge Ram has received J.D. Power & Associates Appeal Award as the most appealing full-size pickup. And because Ram owners rate it this high, we're celebrating with a rate this low. Now lease a Dodge Ram with a Magnum V8 automatic and air for just $2.29 a month. Or get low 1.9 financing. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. The Thousand Islands region. Enjoy the waters of the scenic St. Lawrence River and the Great Lake Ontario, where Canada and New York State meet. Call now, 1-800-8-ISLAND, for your free value pack travel planner, including free map and discount coupons. Historic Watertown, New York. Wet and wild enjoyment for the whole family. Experience the heritage of one of Canada's oldest communities, Brockville, the pride of the St. Lawrence. The City of Kingston, Waterside Festivals, Cruises, Fort Henry, and more, you'll be amazed. Visit the Antique Boat Museum and Historic Clayton, where the tradition continues. Bold Castle and Yacht House, experience the grandest of all Gilded Age mansions. Tour all the Thousand Islands aboard Uncle Sam Boat Tours, featuring an unlimited stop at Bold Castle. The Resort Center, Alexandria Bay, an exciting family getaway in the heart of the Thousand Islands. The unparalleled Thousand Islands region, a sightseeing paradise. Call now for your free travel planner, 1-800-8-ISLAND. Coming up next on WHB TV 21, it's the CBS Evening News, followed by Wheel of Fortune. Then stay tuned for Jeopardy! right here on WHB TV. You are watching Eyewitness News 21 Sports with Rick Liner. All right, French Open still going on out there in France, obviously, mm -hmm. but yeah. uh, haven't uh, <laughs> seen today if Andre Agassi's back in the mix or still well, in the mix. Uh, Andre's still not playing yet, but uh, I'll tell you what, they're playing on clay. That means lots of upsets. Mm -hmm. Happened again today. Mm -hmm. Agassi, of course, playing tomorrow. Quarterfinal play at the French Open Tennis Championships in Paris, France, continued at Roland Garros Stadium. So far, as we said, Andre Agassi is the only seeded player remaining besides number six seed Alex Karecha. And he would face a difficult task today. The Eiffel Tower dominating the Paris skyline. Karecha facing Fernando Meleghini, who is just all over the clay today. Here serving for the match. His forehand too strong, forcing a weak return by Karecha. He wins in straight sets, 6-2, 6-2, 6-love, to advance to the semis. In the other men's quarter, Ukraine's Andrei Medvedev taking on Brazil's Gustavo Huerta. Medvedev would slam home the short volley before winning in straight sets as well 7-5 6-4 and 6-4 also some rain at Roland Garros Stadium building for the future that was the main focus of Major League Baseball teams at today's annual amateur draft in New York five of the first six players chosen were high school players Tampa Bay had the first pick and selected North Carolina outfielder and pitcher Josh Hamilton he's already being compared to Paul O'Neill the Yankees He's a left-handed batter who hit 529 with 13 homers, 35 RBIs as a senior. Florida chose second and took Texas high school pitcher Josh Beckett. Now, locally, the Expos, the Senators' AA affiliate, chose left-handed pitcher Josh Girdley with the number six pick. So we may see Girdley right here in Harrisburg. The Pirates with an eight pick took pitcher Robert Bradley. The Philly selected pitcher Brett Myers with the 12th pick. And Baltimore had the 13th choice and made Mike Paradise, a pitcher, its top selection. The high school baseball and softball playoffs continue tomorrow. In boys double-A baseball, the Palmyra-Littlestown game, scheduled for tomorrow, has been changed from Riverside Stadium to York Suburban. So make a note, the game time, 2 p.m., that is Palmyra and Littlestown. Now, in baseball action this afternoon, San Diego versus the Cubbies. And Chicago scores eight runs in the final two innings. 8-6 San Diego. 
Sammy wins it for the Cubbies with that home run way back to left center field. It was his 18th on the year. Chicago wins it, the final 9-8. In the American League, Texas, a loser to Kansas City, 7-4, and Tampa Bay leading Oakland, 5-2 in the sixth inning. Charismatic arrived at Belmont Park today just before noon. A few minutes later, the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner was installed as the 2-1 morning line favorite for the final leg in horse racing's triple crown. Charismatic drew the number four post position in a 12-horse field. The second choice at 7-2 is Derby and Preakness runner-up Menifee. But those involved heavily with horse racing feel this sport is not given the proper respect. And that has to change. The time is ripe, and hopefully, if not this year, in a year or so, we can bring the American public to realize that we're more important than 14 page on the sports uh, section, and we can move up to at least two or three, or maybe get headlines like we used to. All right, we'll have to see. Meantime, Dale Jarrett defends his championship this weekend at the Dover Downs International Speedway. Jarrett, who drives the number 88 for Taurus, was a surprise winner last year because Jeff Gordon ran out of fuel after dominating most of the race. But according to Jared, he took advantage of his opportunities. Seemed to have the better car, and especially at the end, he got a little bit better. I, I called him for a little bit and then uh, realized that I wasn't going to get any closer, so we said, all right, the only way we can do this is to save a little fuel. So we backed off and decided to do that, and, and Jeff had to pit, so it worked our advantage. Eyewitness Sports will be in Dover Downs and we'll have reports starting Friday night. A tough blow for the New York Knicks. Patrick Ewing will miss the rest of the playoffs with a partially torn left Achilles tendon. The injury was discovered during an MRI this morning. Ewing has averaged a little more than 17 points during the regular season. And there's been a big debate because Patrick and uh, the guy from Indiana, now I forget his name. The guy from Indiana. His We're sister used to play. Reggie Miller? Best. Reggie oh, Miller. Yeah, there you go. It's Miller said fun. that he was faking this injury. Obviously, Patrick wasn't. Obviously not. Now mm -hmm. he's going to sit it out. Right. Okay. And I'm glad you knew Reggie you Miller go. because I uh, just <laughs> drew a blind. Right. Okay. You should be over That's here okay. also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, trust me, Rick. that wouldn't be a good idea. Thanks a lot, Rick. And we'll be right back. I just want to celebrate, yeah, yeah. Now's the time to celebrate, America. It's the Great American Ford Celebration. Great American savings on Great American Ford cars and trucks, like the fully loaded Ford Explorer XLT, America's number one selling sport utility. Just $339 a month with a $999 down payment. A loaded 4x4 with remote keyless entry, a CD player, and more. Just $339 a month with a $999 down payment. Celebrate with the Great American Ford Celebration. Get to your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. Hi, honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? The debtor's delivery man was just here. Why don't you go look in the freezer? Great. I'm going to start the grill. Sarah, go get some food out of the freezer. Dutter's Premium Home Food Service is perfect for today's family on the go. The finest quality meats and perishables are vacuum sealed, portion controlled, and delivered right to your freezer. Dutter's will cut your food preparation time in half. You'll be surprised at how affordable it is. No more wondering what to make for dinner. Dutter's has the food that keeps your whole family happy. Dutter's Premium Home Food Service, the store that comes to your door. Now, during the Cadillac Win-Win Celebration, find outstanding savings on America's favorite luxury cars. Get great lease values like zero down and only $4.99 a month on Stylish DeVille, $5.49 a month on the technology leader, the Seville SLS, and just $3.99 a month on Sporty Katerra. Stop by and enter to win a weekend getaway at the Greenbrier, America's resort. Great cars, great values, and your chance to win a luxury vacation. See your Cadillac dealer for details. My favorite television station is WHP TV 21 on CBS. Here's some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News 21 at 11. Graduation time is here, and that means many of the country's top speakers are making the rounds. Tonight, find out which schools are getting their commencement addresses straight from the White House. Also, after years of debate, the birth control pill comes to Japan, and doctors in New York are trying to figure out what's causing Michael Jackson's son to become gravely ill. Those stories are more at 11. Need a reason to celebrate? A man from Illinois has more than 20 million of them. He hit the jackpot at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. With one pull of the slot machine lever, he won $21 million. So far, the winner of that jackpot in Las Vegas has chosen to remain anonymous. Good, I'd ask him for a loan. Many teenagers consider it a chore to mow the lawn, but a boy from Utah plans to mow his way across the country. 14-year-old Ryan Tripp wants to mow the lawn of every state capital in the nation. He's not trying to earn extra money. Ryan's goal is to raise awareness about the need for organ and tissue donations. 
Okay. Well, he's got a rider mower. That makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's going on in the weather? Oh, well, we're having a second wave of some tough weather moving through, some heavy rain and thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. That is, as that's moving through, that should be it. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing sure. it right now, that should be it as the night wears on. Here's your forecast through tomorrow. It is clearing. We're going to have an early shower tomorrow, but after that, it's going to be clear and is looking like a good weekend. Good. We'd like to hear that. We oh, do yeah. like that. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thank you, much, you Al. Al. You're welcome. That is tonight's Eyewitness News 21 at 6. The CBS Evening News is up next, and you can join us again tonight at 11 for your latest look at the news. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Disaster in Little Rock. Tonight, the latest on the deadly crash of an American Airlines jet.